Hello everyone, I'm back again. As promised in my last video, the next time this carpet was filmed there would be something more interesting on it. Ah. It's here, it's finally here, the Dark Souls board game. Now, it's been a rather long time coming and by now lots of other people have got it out there, showed it off, done all their videos already. But why should that prevent me from just basically opening a box and pulling out things and saying hey look at this cool stuff I got that I like. There's no harm in that, right? As you can see it's still got the, um, the plastic wrapping on it. The cardboard box it came in, which was the new box, two weeks of the delay involved the people who were involved in the posting process deciding to take all of the boxes out of the cardboard boxes they were coming in and putting them in smaller boxes which were a tighter fit. I say they were a tighter fit, you could fit a hand down two sides so it wasn't that amazing. I thought it was going to be a magic golden box or something <laughs> given the, the delay but no, sadly no, just a fairly normal cardboard box. It's just over there actually. Right, I've uh, I've left the wrapping on, but I have sliced along the bottom of it with a knife, you know, just to make things a little bit easier. So, as many of you know, Dark Souls is a very masochistic experience. Endless repetition, pain, hardship, waiting for weeks for it to finally arrive through the post. And, uh, the game's creators don't shy away from the sadistic implications of their creation. They don't mind, uh, you know, taunting and goading the fans a little. So, here we have box lid. The majority of the artwork is very much from Dark Souls 3. Now, while there's a lot of familiar artwork and archetypal things from the first two Dark Souls games, obviously the company, the computer game company called From Software. I mean, how can you call your company From? Here's a new computer game, From, From Software. It doesn't really work, does it? It doesn't roll off the tongue too well. But anyway, uh, you know, they're, they are they just released the new computer game, you know, Dark Souls 3, and they want to publicise that. So obviously, as it's a, uh, as it's um, an officially licensed product, they want it to be involved with the latest one that's going to be selling. But you know, the, the thing people are going to see on the shop shelves and recognise and be like, oh yeah, it's got the same cover picture. I love that. Look at that knight with his top of his helmet broken open and his mouldy dead head inside and the dust falling off him. Yeah, I want to be like that because he's also on fire. Fire is a very important thing in the Dark Souls universe. It's to do with the spark of humanity, but apparently humanity is against the flame or something like that. But anyway, ah, <sighs> being for the flame and against the flame, that can wait for the Darkest Dungeon videos I'd like to do in the far distant future. Anyway, let's get the lid off this box. It's a nice tight fit. I feel resistance, you know, squeezing is good. The lid is off. Oh look, you died. For those of you who haven't played the computer games, uh, this t little two word notification appears on screen whenever a hero perishes. I can see exactly why they placed this in the box. Oh look, I tried to play the Dark Souls board game. I died even opening the box. You know someone, there's probably a meme about dying opening the box already. God, memes, why do they exist? Well, let's take this piece of paper away. I'll probably keep it in there for a while. So lots of things in the box. Have this little tray with lots of cards. And I went and put my knife back, didn't I? That's not fun. Should have kept it here to slice through all this plastic. But then, I see a couple of nice British flags. That's probably because this is the English language version of the game. 
Now, it looks like I'm seeing equipment. That's probably something like dungeon layout. So equipment, equipment, monster AI. There's a lot in this. It's not as extensive as Kingdom Death at all by any means. But there's still plenty to get into here. It's, it's a different kind of game, a different kind of fun, and I'm going to enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed Kingdom Death. Now we have these cardboard partitions. I imagine that a lot of this is going to be the miniatures and the board and tokens, things like that. But let's let's get into this. This seals and unseals along the back here quite nice and easy, so I can actually open that up. Let's turn that round. Okay, what have we here? I'm seeing cards with a red and black back with a almost hexagonal pattern, kind of skewed hexagons. These may be the the boss cards or the the cards that control the most dangerous monsters. I don't know why people call character monsters and hero monsters boss monsters. Well I, I've got a vague idea but it always rankles me a bit and I prefer other terms. We can make them a little bit more unique and have personality. I mean, I don't work for them, you know. Here we have... I'm, I'm obviously going to get these out and open them when I actually start playing and there'll be videos of that, so... Maybe I'm saving time here. Maybe I just don't want to spend ages looking like a fool failing to open excessive plastic packaging when I shouldn't have put my scalpel back in the other room. Different symbol on the back here. I presume that the symbols indicate which creature the cards belong to or which creature they are used by. Maybe that's just normal monsters and special monsters. I'll find that out eventually. So, yeah, we have uh, treasure chests on the back of these cards, treasure chests on the back of those cards. I imagine that all the item cards can have treasure chests on the back. There's a tiny little slip of paper in here. Apparently, number 101. Or 101. This is Dark Souls 101, or at least it will be when I get started on it. <laughs> ah, a sword on the back. Okay, so these might not be treasure. These might be equipment that can be purchased or upgraded at various points during the game. These are... Appears to be a spear and a... A small bag or bell. It actually looks like a badminton dart of all things. Huh. Well, I'll, I'll look forward to getting into these and finding out what all these decks of cards are for. And of course, this plastic bag should contain it all again. Nice and easy. Nope, not as nice and easy. Okay. There we go. These are safely wrapped away for later. I'll put these, I'll put things in the lid just to, as I explore them to get around. Right. Big box, little box, little box looks like it might be heavier. Big box also has a hole in the top so it's easier to pull out, so I'll do that. And beneath it, I'm seeing rule books, boards, things like that. Which suggests to me that these two car brown cover boxes in here are for the miniatures. Of which there will be plenty. Oh, wasn't I mistaken? Little round white things. They look like two halves of popper studs. These are probably for the, the rotating discs, um, the dials, to pin them together. Oh, and there we have some very big figures, don't we? Lovely. That's what we like. So I'll keep these aside. Little wooden cubes, the kind you'd find with German or Central European board games. I'm seeing red, black and white. The red is for wounds. I believe for black is for stamina use. For white, I'm not sure. Maybe that's for some kind of ashen uh, thing or Estus flask use. I'll set them aside for now and I'll 
find out what they're all for later. So this comes apart quite easily. And here we have a number of large, ominous, monstrous creatures. Here we have the Titanite Demon, the bane of many of my early adventures in the first Dark Souls game. I tell you, tra trying to fight that in heavy armor with a sword and shield just wasn't working because it would just jump up in the air and land on top of me and skewer me with its weapon and all sorts of things. Until I worked out I could just hide behind a rock and shoot it full of arrows for ages because it didn't move then. <laughs> oh, this thing was a pain. I'm seeing a slight mold line there. I'll have to tidy that up with a knife later. Some people have reported miniatures being damaged or, or bent or having pieces broken. I'm not seeing any issues so far, but I'll be obviously on the lookout for things like that. The larger monsters have four facing arcs detailed on their base with this great big raised plastic X here. I'm led to believe that is important for the rules. They'll have things like turn and attack someone on the left or something like that. So I'll just put him back in his space. And of course we have got one of the bell gargoyles. There's an interesting cavity there in his back between his wings. I'm not sure how visible that is. Hmm. wonder if I can do something creative with paint there. So the bell gargoyles were notorious for their halberds, the, the axe blades on their tail tips, and of course for breathing fire and coming in twos because they don't believe in fighting fair. There only appears to be one here, but I believe that the game makes you fight a second one immediately afterwards rather than fighting two at once. I can see the join at the tail where it was connected to the body. No major issues here. It looks like a horrible gargoyle monster. I can look forward to being defeated by that many times. Because of course the joy if you can call it that of Dark Souls, is in learning from one's failures. Oh, I now have appeared to come across a slight defect. We have a large crawling hound-like night creature with a sword. His front hand appears to be detached from the base. I'm not sure if that's intentional. I think it might be intended to be glued down. His feet are fairly solid. I'm not sure I'll be able to get a nozzle of a tube of glue in there easily. So I may just have to, you know, layer on the paint around there a bit and attach him that way. Lots of nice ridged details on the armour. And that sword is very interesting. That could be either very icy or, or flaming with those swirling patterns in the blade there. Again, I'm seeing some minor mould lines that are going to need clearing up. But So this, I'll try to avoid facing this foe for a while until I've determined how stable and solid he is there with that hand. But basically that's a non-issue, you know. It's, uh, it's something that's easily dealt with and or or worked around I don't see any problems with that figure particularly beyond the possible slight detachment there. Here we have a big fat knight with a halberd and tiny little metallic wings on the back of his armour. I'm not sure they're functional because they look more like the armour than part of his actual body. Now, his helmet is slightly different to one in the computer game in that the, there's a nose being added. I believe the computer game version 1 comes without a nose. Now, feeling on the underside of the base, I'm, I'm believing this is the front arc. But yeah, this should be fun. I'm looking forward to this one. This will be fun to go up against. Actually, quite easy to get access of a brush to most parts there as well. So, I could see myself enjoying get painting that one. And of course because it's Dark Souls and there's just so much, you know, silvery grey metal, it's actually a really easy colour scheme to paint. Just, you know, silver, done. 
and the Titanite Demon is coming out again because there's a very big hammer behind him that needs to be set free. And this belongs to one of Ornstein and Smaug. Not Smaug, but his hammer handle is very bent, isn't it? I mean, look at the weight of the thing, it kind of makes sense really. I'll see if I can straighten back with hot water, but I doubt it. Tiny little head at the top of the helmet there with two eye holes in what honestly look like testicles beneath the chin, which is probably where his real head is given the shape of the shoulders. Lots of nice detailing on the armor there. Uh, this is quite a horrific foe to be honest. I mean, the size of that hammer is, you know, it, it like, it's bigger than a barrel hammer from the original Conan movie, isn't it? And that hammer was pretty massive. It was just a barrel on a stick. This thing's like a church bell or something. It doesn't appear to actually be a bell, but given the size of it, it might as well be. Now, of course, Ornstein and Smau are a pair who fight together, which just makes them even more difficult. I don't see the, the other one of the couple, but maybe he's in the smaller box, which seems to be where the smaller figures reside. Let's find the top of this again and put these away so I can have a look at that smaller selection. Yep, clips back together again, nice and safe. And I can put these things back in here. Yep, that all closes up nice and easy. On to the smaller figures. Ta-da! It will open, and it did. Ah. Oh, for the joys of gloomy British weather. It's probably going to look just all dark and grey, but then it is grey at the moment. Oh, and there's the other one of the pair I was talking about. So, we have some dice. Red dice, blue dice, black dice. I believe, is that, no, it's green dice. A dark green and black. All right. I will learn, I believe the red are more dangerous, the blue are medium tier, and then the black are the kind of lowest aggressive ones, I mean green might be defensive or dodging or blocking or something. I'm sure they'll come into play in combat. And for all those of you Dark Souls players out there who will be shocked and appalled at the concept of using dice to represent character skill, and character skill being separate to player skill, well, you know all those times when you just miss time a dodge or you, you just you know, don't quite get that attack in perfectly, that's kind of where dice can come in there. And I'm sure there'll be ways of mitigating or manipulating the dice so that you end up rolling more beneficial dice or less beneficial dice. Right then, let's let's have a look at these. Some of these are duplicates, in which case I'll only be drawing out one from each. So we have heroes. We have the knight. Now, I must say, I'm quite upset with the knight, to be honest, because it's this pose, right? I know it's a special attack that was added into Dark Souls 3 that could be done with weapons wielded two-handed, and I, I recognize it, but the knight is all about blocking of his shield, and where's his shield? It's strapped on his back where he's not going to get much use out of it. It's not really defensive at all there. I just wish that out of all the heroes, the one most likely to actually be using a shield effectively would be using his shield. And his sword appears to be miscast. The quillen is very short on this side. That is, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's missing part of his sword. That's not good. Might have to report that. I'll get in touch with Steamforge James and say, Oi, something wrong with this. How wonderful, the, the one figure I was most excited about, the hero I was looking forward to playing, is damaged, defeated already by the postal system. But actually no, it seems to have been something that occurred before it was all packed up, so maybe a factory or something. Alright, after the night we have a warrior with axe and shield. Seems to be dressed for colder weather with furs around his shoulder there, a nice cloak. Armoured in mail. Very thick fur on the boots. Um, 
I believe the warrior is somewhere between the knight and the lighter heroes in terms of combat. He'll be possibly more aggressive, less defensive, and a bit less solid. We have an assassin whose sword will definitely need to be straightened. Now that, that probably can be straightened with water, that's totally fine. Uh, target shield, okay. Or Taj, if you will. Hooded. Yeah, I, I could see some nice, fun painting possibilities there with that figure. Actually, it seems to have a slightly larger base than the knight. Yeah, definitely larger base from the knight. So the heroes have slightly different size bases to accommodate the dynamic nature of their sculpts. This makes total sense. And then here we have the Herald. Now, the Herald is a new hero introduced in, in Dark Souls 3. Something to remember is, obviously if you've played the computer games, you'll know that the, the hero classes are not really classes. They're just a starting kit, a, a choice of essentially a declaration of intent saying, I want to play something like this way. And it's entirely possible to recreate any one hero class from any of the others. You just, as you level up. Now, in the board game, the hero classes are somewhat more defined and it is more of a statement of intent that I will be playing the game this way. They're not that limited, and it's still possible for most heroes to use quite a bit of the stuff other heroes can, but there'll be some things that only one hero class or another will be effectively capable of using. That being said, I understand there's going to be more heroes released later, and then we'll see how things go for them. Now here we have a hollow. Hollow are basically zombies. The thing, of course, with the Dark Souls world is that everyone is dead. Everything is dead, and and the more hardship and horror they go through, they lose their humanity until they eventually become hollow. And the hollows are horrific, aggressive monsters who just attack people. I'm seeing a helmet, sword and shield. I'm very disappointed at the lack of Dark Souls 1 Spear and Shield Hollow, really, because they are so iconic and I was expecting to see one. Well, I wasn't because I, I knew what was coming, but I was hoping to see one. So we have three with Sword and Shield. The Shield is the Dark Souls freestyle Hollow Shield, and this, in fact, is the majority of the gear there, so it's not your Dark Souls 1 Sword and Shield Hollow. But that's okay, because they're not that massively different. We have three hollow with crossbows. I'm seeing mold lines here, but again, fairly minimal. Nice helmet there. Crossbows looking good. Hang on. Okay, one crossbow is looking damaged and is actually missing part of the tip of one of the arms of the crossbow. I'll uh, have to include that in the report as well. That third crossbow is fine. It'll need a little straightening. It's a bit bent, but it's fine. Now, additionally for monsters here, we have some silver knights. These silver knights, or black knights, that looked exactly the same, they're just different colours, were very nasty foes. We have three here. And of course the iconic silver knight stroke black knight helmet, which is too thin for his head to physically fit inside. Yeah. Well, these are going to be nasty. I hope I don't have to face more than one at any given time, because that would just be horrific. I imagine three of them at once will be a more advanced challenge. Then, moving on to this second tray here, we have silver knights with ginormous bows and arrows that are basically harpoons or spears. There's three of those. I'm not looking forward to those. All of you who've been up on the Lothric or Londo or Anor Londo or New Londo or New Lothric or Lordran or all the other names that begin with L, that place with the narrow walkways of these things would shoot you off and it was just horrible. Yeah, not looking forward to that. I imagine that is a horror waiting to be faced. We have two hollows with massive, two, well, two ginormous hollows with massive two handed axes. These are very familiar for Dark Souls 3 players. They, they do that thrashing, smashing, 
repeated flurry of blows, but it can be difficult to dodge when you don't have a working dodge function because the PC port doesn't like the keyboard and gives you a horrible input delay on dodging because you can block one or two smashes with the most big axes but after that your stamina kind of runs out and they just wallop you. Right, the big man with the big spear who goes with the big man with the big hammer. They're very good friends. They're not good friends of mine, they're not good friends to heroes, they're good friends of each other's though. Apparently they're very good friends actually. Um, yeah. But then it's always difficult trying to find out anything about Dark Souls because nothing's ever laid out clearly for player. You have to go and find things out for yourself and then guess and make assumptions because the games writers don't want to let you know how much they haven't written down for you. And finally we have two ginormous knights with halberds and shields who are, have tiny heads and apparently have a major weak spot around their ankles somewhere where they just can't reach foes. Well, that's a lot of miniatures. Most of them in full armour, so easy paint jobs for me. I will not complain about them wearing that much armour. I will grumble about this one not wanting to lie flat in the tray very well there, so that might be a bit of a pain to get back in the box, but I'm sure I'll manage. There we go. And the pigeons are being noisy in the chimney again, isn't that lovely? Okay, nice big rule book here. Now for Kickstarter backers, the PDF rule book has been available for quite some time now, although I've avoided reading it because I wanted it to be fresh when I dived into it enthusiastically and got killed by my first enemies. I'm sure it's going to happen. There's a nice load of useful stuff on the back there, which I'm sure make a lot more sense when I familiarise myself with the content. Lots of wonderful illustrations, which I'm sure many of you will be familiar with. You know, nice layout. Doesn't look like there's too much writing, because, you know, sometimes something can get a little wordy, and some people shy away from that a little bit. So, I'll look forward to reading this in my own time off camera and get ready for my first session. I will be playing the game solo. And uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to play it the way I play Dark Souls, which is I play solo, I play as a knight. So <laughs> you can imagine how that's going to go. Right. Heroes come with these hero boards. I'm seeing lots of tokens around the edge here. I don't know that these tokens along the bottom are explicitly for this particular hero because I suspect they have different ones on each sheet. So here we have the Assassin's Sheet. We have Ability Scores. Ah, this, this might be where the white ones go to mark what the Ability Score is because all these will obviously punch out. Uh, red damage will come from that side, black fatigue will come from that side, and when they meet in the middle, you're dead. You've messed up, you can't defend yourself, monsters kill you. Bad time, bad things happen. I see lots of space for cards to be laid out here. I imagine that all these numbers will be different on different sheets, so that's the assassin sheet there. Oh, these are wanting to link together. So, Herald. Herald desperately wants to be... Ah, it's disconnected finally. Here we have the warrior and the knight sheet again. It's looking like the, the tokens along the bottom here are all purpose. I mean, everyone gets a treasure chest one. These ones vary, those are similar, these are different. So I don't think they're character specific. I think they're going to be all in use at various points during play. I have another sheet here. So here we have dials. So this would be where those little popper stud things would come in to collect connect the two halves of a dial together so they could rotate. I'm seeing dials for the character monsters. I'm not seeing any for the heroes, but that's because it goes on their character board. And I'm not seeing any for the normal monsters because normal monsters don't use the dials, they have their own system. These tokens will probably all mean something. They're traps or something. Oh, yeah, they're 
they got something on the other side. I'm expecting many of these to be double sided. Alright, one postal interruption later, we appear to have board sections. So, are these double sided? Yes, they are beautifully double sided, in fact. Um, you'll notice there's no sort of square grid, instead, there's these circular. This sort of diamond pattern, I believe that's used for movement rather than a square grid. Uh, it's interesting, I'll look forward to trying that out. The, the big red circle of the skull on it with what looks like a crown on it concerns me, though I imagine something very dangerous will go on those spots. Uh, let's look at some more of these rooms. I'm seeing a chest there or a large wooden shield. Some broken and damaged equipment, a fire pit. And on this side, more broken and damaged equipment. I want... Oh! <laughs> I see Andre of, Andre of a Giant. Wow, Andre of a Storer, not quite Andre of a Giant. Uh, is that a firekeeper? Uh, someone else over here. So this would, must be the Firelink Shrine tile. That'll be interesting to play about with. Uh, it would be nice if they eventually can bring out the Phylic Shrine characters but uh, as miniatures, but for now I'm content to work with whatever I'm given really. We have another nice board section, a little dais there in the centre. The floor seems to have fallen away here or been damaged or some wall has collapsed into rubble. Oh! I wonder if that's a, a double-ended room then, a two-tile location. I think it is, because it's it's got a matching pattern to There we are. See we have a, a nice big dangerous location. And then on the reverse here, another matching one. Oh yeah, look at that. That that lines up there along that join quite nicely. I have uh, a few more room tiles in here. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's get them out and have a look at them. Okay, this one, uh, we've got red sword, crossed swords, purple thing, purple thing. I presume these are these symbols are for encounter layouts so that they can use the same boards time and time again and, so, and just, here's a card, here's some monsters, put this on the red sword, put this on the purple star, you know. And indeed, red sword, crossed swords, purple star, purple thingy. A little bit gouged there, that's unfortunate, but hey, it could be worse, could be much worse. So I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm seeing mouldy rotten flooring breaking away there. And I am talking about the board. <laughs> we have nice floor tiles here, very nice. Nicely laid out. I'll look forward to using this room at some point. I'll probably regret it when I do. And here we have wooden flooring and stone flooring. Again, the wooden flooring has seen better days. This next one appears to be related. We have this nice tile motif. Actually, I wonder if the tiles are, the floor tiles are supposed to be all for a specific area. Like, um, we have these, you know, these bits with wooden flooring and stone flooring, these are more sort of, uh, Blight Town, Undead Burg, not, not Blight Town, sorry. <laughs> but these are more the sort of early game areas and then the sort of later game areas are more of this mosaic flooring look. It's not really a mosaic, but these interesting floral patterns and Celtic knotwork. We have another nice one of these. So again, some more Celtic knotwork, the four symbols we've come to be familiar with by this point. And, ooh, there's a lot of water on this one. We've got a central flooring area. we got... Oh, you know what this reminds me of. This reminds me of Yundex Gundir. Was it y Yudex Gundir? Or Ludex Gundir, or Judex Gundir. The font they used was a little bit awkward to tell, but I think it was Yudex. Hmm. Might have to ask some fans on that one. We're nearly at the bottom of the box, just two more tiles to go. 
So this looks like there's a carpet here. This doesn't look like a carpet, but this does. Because you just wouldn't do a floor pattern overlaid on top of another one like that. That'd just be crazy. There's nice torches in braziers around the edge of the room there. Wouldn't be sconces, sconces are on walls. We got some precarious wooden flooring here with a very loose wooden bridge. Yeah, this is more of a blight town area. Horrible place, hope you never have to experience that. Or if you do remember it, well, I'm sorry you had to go there. And finally we have one more tiled area. Yep, the pigeons seem to know I'm finishing up there, eagerly cooing there. And then more bricks and mortar. After that, well, the box is empty. But it is still a nice box. We have some pictures around the side here. We appear to have a ruined, well, a citadel. Of sort. Actually, that's a pretty big, almost like a cathedral. We have, uh, hmm, wish I'd looked at this before and see what it is now. Some scenes around the edge of the box. And then, at the bottom of the box, obviously, a list of all the stuff that's supposed to be in it. Some more artwork. Uh, that was from the Dark Souls 2 teaser trailers, that particular image, wasn't it? And, uh, right, well, I hope you've all enjoyed this. I'll get this uploaded and online, and then I'll get round to playing it sometime in the not-too-distant future. Alright, awesome. Bye-bye.